Okay, so we're back for the second part of the gas analysis lecture and let's get right to it. So this is the uh, readings because we need to find out what's uh, typical of the, of the of coming out of the engine, okay? What's typical coming out of the engines? And let's look at these different little um, uh, indicators here. It says the following are typical hydrocarbon readings, okay? So the hydrocarbons, it says, um, it says out, of the, out of the engine, out of the engine, if we, if we take a, a general uh, reading of most vehicles, we're gonna get something along the lines of about 50 to 200 parts per million of hydrocarbons, okay? Today's vehicles, um, and, and that's just out of the engine, that's out of the engine itself, okay, without any kind of treatment. If it has air injection, okay, which is one of the emission control systems, it'll drop it down, okay, because air injection will drop it down, it'll, it'll help to, uh, to oxidize the, the hydrocarbons, okay. With a converter though, look at, look at with, a, with a converter, we should have near zero, okay. So when we measure our cars on uh, next week, okay, or, th or this week, actually, if you're watching this on Monday, um, we should have close to zero hydrocarbons, okay? So this is how much a converter is supposed to clean up, okay? A converter is supposed to take away about 50 to 200 parts per million, anything more than that, and it's not a converter, okay? It's something else not cleaning that system up. And a converter can't be held responsible and can be held expected to clean that up. The following are carbon monoxide readings, okay? Out of the engine, we should get about 0.1 to maybe 1%. With air injection, it stays roughly the same, about to 1%. But again, look, with a converter, we should get very close to zero, okay? So once again, this is the, the 1.0 1. 1 or 1%. 1 that's how much a converter is expected to clean that up, okay? And then here, um, we have typical oxygen sense or oxygen readings. Out of the engine, we get about 0.3 to 0.7%. With air injection, we, if we inject more into it, of course, it's gonna increase quite a bit. But with a converter, okay, with a converter, we will get about two to 5% or 5.5%. Again, that's with, with air injection. Again, oxygen coming out, make a note here, make a side note on your, in your book, because this is in your book, that um, oxygen, much like hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide, out of the tailpipe with a converter should also be very close to zero. Remember that, should be very close to zero. To zero. And we'll see that when we do the emissions testing um, on the vehicles downstairs. And then finally, carbon dioxide, okay? Carbon dioxide, engine out carbon dioxide with a vehicle running optimum, you know, running optimally, we'll get about 13.6 to about 14%, uh, okay? With air injection, it drops quite a bit because it makes it inefficient, okay? With air injection and a converter, it raises it up slightly, but notice with a converter and no air injection, we, we get about 15%. So most of the cars we're gonna look at next week expect to see about 15% of carbon dioxide. And again, if, it's, if it has carbon dioxide at near 15%, all the other gases will be right on point, okay? You cannot have high carbon dioxide and have high um, HC, CO, or um, oxygen, it's impossible. Okay, so those are our, ba our base readings. Make sure you remember those, okay? Uh, that's what we're gonna be looking at next week, okay? Uh, give me a second here. Okay, um, so these are, these are some emissions readings. This is actually gonna be kind of like one of the machines we're gonna use. And this is no load. This is just, this is, a, an, an, in other words, we're not in the dynamometer. We're simply have the RPMs at 696 RPM, which is just at idle. Notice, look at our readings. Our hydrocarbons are at six, and that's parts per million, okay? Our carbon monoxide is at zero, okay? Our carbon dioxide, 15, remember what I said? And then our oxygen is at zero. These are good, normal readings, okay? That's basically out of the converter what a vehicle should read, okay? That's what a vehicle should read out of the converter, 
Okay, remember these, just basically almost nothing except for the carbon dioxide. We want to see this nice high number, and that's about as high as it's going to get. We don't see carbon dioxide get much higher than that. Okay. Let's look at these five readings here. Okay, let's look at these five readings. Let's look at this first one. So this first one, we have hydrocarbons at 636, carbon monoxide at 4.37, okay? Um, carbon dioxide at 9.3, and then oxygen at 3.84, okay? And our NOx at 35, okay? And we're at zero speed, so um, I'm not sure what uh, or, or this is under loaded mode, okay? So, but it's not giving us uh, a speed right now. It's at, it's at zero miles per hour, okay? And it's not giving us an RPM reading either. So think, take a second and try to think about what's going on here, okay? What's happening here? What do you think is causing these readings? First of all, are they normal? Are these readings normal? Okay, think about that for a second. How about these readings? Now we're at uh, about 13 miles per hour, 385 parts per million. Carbon dioxide went up a little bit. Carbon monoxide dropped, okay? NOx went up um, quite a little bit and oxygen dropped, okay? We're at 13.7, okay, moving on. Now we're at 22 miles an hour, okay? Hydrocarbons dropped a little bit more. Carbon dioxide went up a little bit, okay? Oxygen went down, CO went up slightly, and then NOx went up as well, okay, at 22. Now we're at 33 miles per hour. Carbon, mono, carbon, I'm sorry, hydrocarbons continue to drop, carbon dioxide continues to go up, oxygen continues to go down, carbon monoxide drops, and NOx drops, okay, at 33. And then finally, at 42 miles per hour, okay, we have um, hydrocarbons at 53 parts per million, carbon dioxide at 14.2, Oxygen at 0.4 at 4.3, carbon monoxide at um, just a, a 0 0.03, okay? And then NOx is at 734 at 42. What happened here? What do you think happened? Any ideas? What happened here is that the catalytic converter started to work, okay? It started off cold, and as we increased the speed on the dynamometer, it got hotter, it got hotter. When it reached about 500 degrees, then it started, it, it kicked off, it, it, it lit, as they say, okay? And, it, and, it, and, the, and the number started to drop. Then when it got to about 1,000 degrees, okay, it really started to work, okay? And this is what we ended up with. Okay? So, so it cleaned it up quite a bit, cleaned it up quite a bit. Uh, keep in mind that at a, on a cold engine, though, a lot of this high readings are just the engine running excessively rich because it needs to run rich when we're, we first start, right? For it, so it can warm up and it can start and stay running. We need to run it rich, okay? So what happened here? The converter started to work. Simple as that. Uh, we're, what we're going to try to do next week is we're going to try to start some vehicles and take a screenshot as they start up. As soon as they start up cold, we're gonna take a screenshot, okay? And then we'll, we'll be able to monitor them, okay? This is a chart, you have this on your, in your book. This describes the different ways that, um, that the different effects, like uh, ignition miss, compression loss. I'm not gonna go through all these. Please read through these because you're, you're gonna expect to kind of remember some of these. Uh, we have an ignition miss. How did it affect hydrocarbons go up? Carbon monoxide goes down, carbon dioxide goes down, and oxygen goes up, okay? Why? Because when we have an ignition miss, we don't burn the fuel. The fuel, the fuel comes right out. Carbon uh, monoxide drops because the fuel's not starting to burn, 
right? It has to start to burn in order to create some carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide goes down because any adverse effect causes carbon dioxide to go down. And then oxygen goes up because again, if nothing happened to the hydrocarbons, nothing's gonna happen to the oxygen. Again, I'm not gonna go through all of these, please look at them. I'll go back over them slightly or a little bit as we, uh, when we go into class next week and I describe the labs. Okay. This is a chart to tell you um, what vehicles, what, what the, what's a pass and fail standard should be. Okay, and this is just a rough, I, 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 will show you, I will show you in class the website to go to and you can actually dial in your own car. Okay, remind me, and you can dial in your own car, you can find out what the standards are. But let's look here, uh, and I'm just gonna go all the way down to 1991 and newer, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way down here. I'm not gonna mess with any of this. I'm gonna go all the way down to 90, 90, 1991 and newer, okay? And I'm gonna go with, um, with a, a passenger car, actually 1993 and newer, passenger car, so that's this table here, okay? Passenger car, 1993 and newer, and then we're gonna go, come across and look at the pass and fail standards. So the highest that, that, um, that hydrocarbons can be at, um, at idle are 100, okay? I, um, carbon monoxide, 1.0. Um, at 2,500, we can have 130 hydrocarbons and then 1% of carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide stays the same, but look how low, right? That's for 1993. So remind me, I'll show you the table for a brand new vehicle, okay? Uh, or, or newer vehicle, and you'll see how low they actually are. And then here is where we have something called um, gross polluter standards, okay? Gross polluter standards. So if we look and we look and, and we say, uh, and we say uh, uh, what a gross polluter is, a gross polluter is a vehicle that is at least or very close to double the pass and fail standard. So going back to this 1993, notice that a gross polluter would be 250, again, more than double, and 2.5, more than double, 280, more than double, and 2.5, more than double. If a vehicle is tested and, it, and, and its measures as a gross polluter, then that vehicle will have to be tested at a test only or a star station or a smog referee, okay? And then over here um, is the minimum CO and CO2. This is just a mathematical uh, table you can do if you add, if you add the readings from the CO and the CO2, that's the minimum it, could, it, it should be. If not, uh, you know that there's something wrong with a combustion process, okay? Uh, and then this is just a max idle. Okay. So let's look at a couple of uh, scenarios. What happens if the HC is too high, you're measuring and the hydrocarbons are too high. Um, why? Why, is, why does that happen? Well, many times it's an engine misfire. Okay. And one of the first things we should look at is the ignition system. If the HCs are too high, one of the main reasons is a misfire. Look at the ignition system. That's one of the main causes. Or, um, it, um, you know, again, the ignition system, the spark plugs. Don't forget though that an AC can also be caused by excessive rich condition, okay, if it's very rich, okay? And here's some of the reasons I'll let you go through that and look at it, okay? CO too high, okay? So rich, CO is always a rich indicator. So that's an easy one to remember. If CO is too high, it's a rich condition. Just start looking for a rich condition. Okay, here's, a, here's some examples. Make sure you know some of these, okay? Make sure you know some of these. There's, there's gonna be a quiz coming up and the quiz is gonna cover the areas that we've already uh, uh, covered, okay? So it's gonna be kind of a general quiz and it's gonna cover uh, exhaust gases, it's gonna cover um, uh, scan tools, it's gonna cover uh, VIN, um, and it's gonna cover DSOs, but we haven't touched those yet, but. Uh, keep that in mind, okay? Um, oxides of nitrogen. So oxides of nitrogen occur when the combustion temperature reaches 2,500 degrees or higher, okay? And uh, that is because they, um, um, that is because 
oxygen and nitrogen mix. Okay, oxygen and nitrogen mix, they bake together and they, uh, it's very hard to separate them again. Okay. Um, one other thing to remember is that whenever you have a hole in the exhaust, okay, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have, actually you're gonna have uh, outside air drawn into the exhaust system, okay? And it's gonna do everything from fool the oxygen sensor to not allow the, the converter to reduce oxides of nitrogen, okay? So a, a leaking exhaust will always cause you emissions problems, believe it or not. You think that it would take and actually help the situation, but it does not. So one of the things that we typically do in the exhaust, or I'm sorry, in the emissions testing world is that we check for exhaust leaks, very, very common. So in summary, remember that uh, hydrocarbons are created by lack of, 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 of proper combustion. Carbon oxide is created by a rich air fuel mixture. Oxides of nitrogen are created by excessive pressure um, or lean, okay, conditions. Uh, carbon dioxide is, the, uh, is, is an indicator of engine efficiency, okay. Oxygen is, um, is an indicator of the, the, how lean the mixture is, okay. So remember, go back over these slides, they're in your book as well. Well, not these slides, but the, the causes, okay. And it says here, it says a vehicle should be driven about 20 miles, especially during cold weather to allow the engine to fully warm up before an enhanced emissions test. That, that's true. And that's it, okay? So um, please review this uh, video. That's all I have for you right now. And um, we will uh, talk again. This is gonna be the only lecture for this week. You have a video presentation that's gonna have an embedded quiz as well on exhaust gas. Actually, there's two videos to watch and those will be um, in the module as well. So um, hopefully you learned a little bit about um, exhaust gas analysis. We'll talk a little bit more about it and we'll do some actual labs on it on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, just email me. Uh, please review and read your book. Be ready for next week um, on exhaust gas analysis. Thank you for your attention.